Okay, in this video we're going to look at the idea, general idea of hypothesis testing. Uh, in particular, we're interested in doing hypothesis testing using binomial distributions and Poisson distributions, though in certain cases these can lead to you using a normal approximation to approximate for them. So it says, in a scientific inquiry, a statement concerning a population parameter is put forward as a statistical hypothesis. This is uh, tested against an observed value taken from a random sample from a population. For example, we could say that the probability of uh, success in some t exam is 40%, so therefore looking at binomials P would be equal to 0 0.4, and then we could test to see whether people did better than 40%. So with the alternative uh, hypothesis would be P is greater than 40% or P is greater than 0 0.4. Okay, so then we have this idea of what's known as null and alternate hypothesis. We assume that the sample is drawn from a binomial uh, distribution or possible distribution, but this also works for other distributions as well, but in this course we're generally interested in those two. This is called the null hypothesis, so, so that would be the example that I just gave where I said that P, uh, the chance of passing the exam would be 0 0.4, where P will be equal to 0 0.4 for a binomial distribution. The test is then carried out to determine that we should reject or or the null hypothesis. If we reject the uh, null hypothesis, which is H0, we do that in favour of an alternative hypothesis written H1. So say for example P was, the chance of passing my exam was 0 0.4, 40%, and then I had a, I don't know, a sample of 20 students and I wanted to test whether 15 or more had passed the uh, test. Okay, so the that fifteen, that I had fifteen who did uh, better than uh, forty percent. Then that would be what I would have to calculate the probability of that happening, and test that against the null hypothesis. And if I rejected it, then I'd do it in favour of an alternative hypothesis, which would be be p, the pass rate p would be is greater than forty percent, something like that. And you'll see how this works when I in some of the later videos. So once you get an alternative hypothesis, then we have Two, two types of tests that we do. We have a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. So two types of tests that can be performed. Which test is chosen depends on the alternate hypothesis, H1. So if we have X is NP, and I have the H0, P is equal to some population parameter. In my example, I use 0 0.4 then my alternative hypothesis could be that P is less than 0 0.4. And this would be a one-tailed uh, test, so I'm looking for a definite decrease here. And I take just a random uh, binomial distribution, this is uh, uh, N is 40, P is 0 0.5, then I need to calculate where, where there would be less than 5% of the population, which is in this case uh, somewhere in the 15th value here. Okay, and this represents here uh, 5%, and this is called the critical region. And I only have, it's one tailed because I'm only looking for a definite decrease. All right, and that depends on using less than. If, I, if my alternative hypothesis was more than, uh, uh, my particular value, so my particular value for alpha was 0 0.4, then I would be looking for a definite increase in this case, so I'd be looking in the upper tail, and that happens somewhere around in the 27th uh, uh, value. And you'll see how this works when we do some later videos. If we calculate a test statistic, and it lies in the critical region. So say my 15 out of 20 lands in my uh, critical region somewhere over here, then I will reject H0 in favour of my alternative hypothesis, and I would say that the pass rate is actually higher than uh, 40%, if using my example. 
if x is binomially distributed, and I just, just want to look, um, if p was equal to uh, 0 0.4 and p is not equal to 0 0.4, then that would be a two-tailed test. And because it's two-tailed, then these m regions would get reduced. This would have to be 2.5%, and that's the lower tail, and the upper tail would have to be uh, 2.5%. So that plus that would add up to the 5%. This is called the critical region. And again, the same idea. If we calculate a test statistic, and if it lies in the critical region, so if it overlies here or here, then I reject H0 in favour of H1. If it lies somewhere in here, then I accept that H0 is true. This is how it works. Now, the level of the test is normally 5%. If it's not said, it's normally 5%. However, Different levels can be used, such as 2%, which is make that 0 0.02, which that means that would have to be 0 0.01, so that line would have to be somewhere else, and this line would have to be zero, somewhere else as well, and it would change for the one-tail test as well. 1%, and it would actually say, if you wanted to use a different level in the test, that's it would change the size of the critical region. All right, so the steps for carrying out a test, hypothesis test, is one, state suitable null and alternative hypotheses, state the type of test, one tail or two tail, and that depends on the alternate hypothesis, write down the distribution of the random variable, so depending on what null hypothesis we use, it will tell me that x would have to be binomial np, all right, because in my example, I used, I think, 20, and uh, my p would have been 0 0.4. And the same if it's a Poisson uh, type of problem. If n is large, i.e. n is greater than 20, or mp is less than 10, or uh, uh, lambda is greater than 20, then an approximation can be used, and the approximation normally used is uh, the normal distribution. Calculate the test statistic using CDF tables or a calculator. So the old days is to use CDF tables. Should be plural. CDF tables or calculator. And the modern days we have GDCs which come up with the uh, critical these values uh, for you. You don't need the tables, depending on what course you do. And before state the conclusion of the test. So the conclusion is made against the rejection criteria. So where is that boundary for the five percent? Do, do I lie in it in the critical region or do I not lie in the critical region? Okay, so this has been a brief introduction on showing you what is an hypothesis test. Okay, to really understand it, then you need to look at the following videos of the different types of examples that can happen. I hope you've understood, and I thank you very much for watching.